Hi, I'm Bigger Stickers, and I've had too much coffee today, so I just want to hit things really hard, like... And what better game to hit things hard in than Dark Souls? In which you play as a sentient raisin that escapes prison and beats up a dog before making some soup that lets you kill God himself. It's okay though, because he's senile. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Can you one-shot Dark Souls? This is a lemon. Great for lemonade, goes well with fish. And this is lemon, hey? AKA the backlogs. Great for challenge runs and goes well with firebombs. Ow. And when Lemon approaches a group of Soulsborne YouTubers and challenges them to one-shot their way through Dark Souls, there's no way we're gonna say no because we crave the empty validation that comes from beating a slightly difficult video game. So, here are the rules. There is a list of 130 targets, made up of bosses, NPCs, invaders, and non-respawning enemies. Killing a target on the list in one attack gives you one point. You can only level up with points you've earned from killing targets, which prevents people just farming for levels early on. Any attack that only involves one push of the attack button counts as a one-shot, even if the attack itself has multiple hits. Safe scumming is allowed. No shotting a target also nets you the point. So if enemies want to find ways to end their own existence, that's fine. But no glitches or unintended skips are acceptable. So I guess we're doing this one by the book. If you want to find out how the overall competition went, I highly suggest you go and watch Lemon's video, where you can see how some very skilled runners approach this through careful planning and thorough testing. This video though, this is just pure unbridled chaos. There is an old saying in my family, thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. That's a very specific saying, my guy. Your fam is weird. Let's begin. Real name, no gimmicks, pyromancer class to start for early access to power within, master key as a gift, and a face only a frog could love. The challenge itself doesn't start until you reach Lordran, so I dispatched Cheeks McGee in the normal way, played peekaboo with a bird, and arrived at Firelink to begin in earnest. First port of call was collecting a weapon for my run. And what better way to start a one-shot challenge than by hitting people with a literal tree? Only problem is, you need 19 strength to wield said tree, and my skinny frog arms weren't quite up to the task yet, so I would need to squeeze seven levels out of somewhere. Luckily, the rules actually state that you must kill a target with either one or zero attack button presses. So if a black knight wants to cosplay as a prism stone, that's fine by me. And if the forest hunters enjoy being tickled by bushes, then who am I to spoil their fun? I used alluring skulls to grill some bacon, stood by and watched as Shiva's bodyguard was licked to death by a... I, I have no idea what these things actually are. And finally defeated Shiva using the ultimate power of dumb AI. It's clubbing time! Regardless of what weapons or spells you're going for, if you want to do max damage, you'll need a couple of essentials in the form of the Red Tear Stone Ring and Power Within. And don't forget to buy the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring from Griggs before killing him, because you wouldn't want to be that guy that forgot and had to restart their entire run as a result. Sheesh, imagine being that guy, eh? Taurus Demon took it to the face like a champ, Solaire went to stay on a farm and is definitely still alive as we speak, and I had enough levels to one hand the Great Club. Which is nice, because I always like to keep one hand free while fighting the stupid sexy Capra demon. 
At this stage, I'd like to point out what a terrible weapon this is for this fight. If I'd been able to just wildly swing upon entering the fog, it wouldn't be an issue, but I couldn't risk hitting Capra himself, and taking out his mots without just hitting the wall is a pain. Finally though, I managed to remove both dogs from the equation, let Capra get me into RTSR range, and dropped in to say hello. Lovely stuff. With the key to the depths, I could now enter the depths. Duh, that's what the key is for. I worked my way through the area, taking out some low-level targets en route and freeing Laurentius before facing the gaping dragon. Failing to one-shot a target doesn't mean the end of the run if the target remains alive after the attempt, which means that cutting off tails and then leaving the arena is perfectly legit, and the gaping dragon happens to drop a particularly powerful tail weapon, the Dragon King Great Axe which has an extremely strong R2 attack that is basically Wrath of the Gods with extra steps. Oh gee whiz, I'm sure the materials to upgrade this are abundant and easily obtained. <sighs> so, here's the thing. Because I play on console, I didn't have the luxury of being able to test things out first in the same way PC users can, which meant giving myself all the options possible which in turn meant I spent a lot of time here throughout this run farming scales. So I should introduce you to my three best friends, Barry, Larry, and Terry. Barry, age 63, loves jumping backwards off cliffs and hates dropping dragon scales. He's not scalist, he just doesn't like them, simple. Larry enjoys nothing more than a cold pint of Stella and slowly shuffling forward just enough to cock block you. And then there's Terry, Terry is just a c**t. Don't be like Terry. For now, a plus two axe packed enough of a punch to dispatch both gargoyles with relative ease. Look, I said relative, okay? I rang the first bell and then returned to Drakesville to get my axe all the way up to plus five. Lautrec and Mildred fulfilled their roles as stress toys remarkably well and it was time to answer the age-old question. Well... No, but you can sure as hell get fucked by one. So, how do you one-shot Quaylag? The secret ingredient is height, and there's no need for ledges when running and jumping off an elevated area can do the trick. One spot you can do this from is the steps at the far end of the arena. Quaylag said no, and I eventually stopped being stubborn and switched to a sloped area to the left of the fog. This still isn't straightforward though. Connecting with just the spidery bits won't do nearly enough damage. You need to make full contact with her lady parts to get the kill. But after a few more tries, the axe did its job, I rang the bell and upgraded my flame, gave my lady 30 human titties, and I was ready for sends. Get out of my way! There are two ways to deal with the Iron Golem. Either one-shotting him outright, or triggering him to fall. In order to get him to fall, he needs to take damage after being staggered. So Chaos Firestorm is a perfect option because of the lava pools it leaves everywhere. Help! He's fallen and he can't get up! Before packing my bags for the big city, I decided to do a bit of cleanup first. Killing the Hydra now would have been nice for the Dust Crown but I was still puny and frail, so I consoled myself by running my pet pupper a nice warm bath, got horrendously violated by torch hollows, and went to find some things to smash for therapy. Like these.
Well, that was fun. At least Solaire will be hit. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Baron and I'm stubborn. Also, I've had even more coffee now. Ah! Here's the thing. The optimal way to do this would be with a fully upgraded flame and pyromancies. However, I only had Chaos Storm at this point, and I didn't want to head back just yet, so I decided to try and melee kill Ornstein in Phase 1 with the Great Axe. Problem is, Ornstein is secretly two dogs in a trench coat, because 90% of the time, he just hops backwards out of the hitbox whenever you have that absolute gall to dare to press your attack button. And on the rare occasions he doesn't, Smo usually shows up to turn you into pavement puree anyway. This meant my attempts at phase 2 were few and far between. And since I'd need to get perfect RNG there as well, I bit the bullet and set off on the long journey back to power up. I farmed some souls, got my glove to plus 4 ascended, took out a couple more targets, including the 4chan user demon in the basement, and most importantly, bought Firestorm to give me a second pyro option. Yeah, I should have just done this in the first place. Take it! With the duo expired, the boobs admired, and the soup bowl acquired, I could start planning for the DLC. But first, painting time. Although I didn't need them just yet, I farmed the bird ladies for 10 souvenirs in order to obtain Dark Moon Blade and the Dark Moon Talisman. Made a brief detour into the Tomb of Giants to kill Leroy for the Sanctus Shield, which helps to counter the health drain of power within and I return to my seven-headed nemesis for round two. Apply hot sauce and power within here where it's safe, then make a beeline for the item in the water and stand just in front of it. Beautiful. Finally, I could get my hands on the crown of dusk. Shoo, it's mine now. Which boosts magic by a further 20%. Meaning, I now had every item I needed to get the maximum damage from my pyro flame. Fine, I guess I'm ready to be your stress toy now, Manus. Sanctuary Guardian wasn't too taxing, and went down after four tries when it decided to go for a relaxing jog through lava. I entered Ulusil itself, and then decided I should spend the souls I was carrying on something useful. So, I went to the archives to free Logan and buy his spells, which is a required step in his quest. I'd turn away from the screen right about now if I was you. Okay, all done. Time for Arty. Quite easy, actually. It's no biggie. Come on then, you one-armed freak. I dare you to try and stab me. I said, stab me. I said... Okay, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hardest boss in the game. Next, the formality of getting rid of his girlfriend. Oh. Excuse me? You have how much HP exactly? That's better. I slowly worked my way through Ulusil while everything spammed Dark Orb at me in a subtle reference to Dark Souls 2 when I got my hands on Dark Bead. Which, as everyone who's ever been invaded in Undead Burg knows, is an absolute beast of a spell, especially considering it only requires 16 int to use. Now, blasting everything with Dark Bead might seem like one of the most obvious ways to finish off a lot of the remaining targets, 
but I wanted to use it as little as possible, except for a couple of specific instances. Basically, if I could use something other than dark bead, I would. Having said that, the best catalyst for it is the tin crystallization catalyst, which is obtained by killing Logan at the end of his quest, which also requires you to kill Seath first. On paper, you might think that this would be tough given how much HP he has, but... Yeah, he's made of sugar paper apparently. GG's, close one. Good old never-ending shitshow over here is the main reason I wanted Dark Bead. See, in order to trigger Ceaseless to fall off the edge and die, you need to hit him five separate times. And, although I tested a number of melee weapon options on a backup save, I couldn't find anything that hit more than three times with one attack. So Dark Bead, which fires off seven pellets at once, would be the best option. However, you need to make sure you stand far enough away and at the right angle so that the beads all hit at slightly different times, like so. If you stand too close, multiple beads will hit at the same time and it won't count as five separate hits. Ceaseless ceased discharging, so that was a goddamn lie, and I moved on to the Demon Fire Sage, who was surprisingly annoying, though not as surprising as the fact that he's not particularly resistant to fire. Your bloodline is weak. Someone whose bloodline is less weak, however, is the Centipede Demon, which is, unsurprisingly, immune to fire, given that it lives in a lake so hot it burns my eyeballs. Thanks for that, FromSoft. Sorcery would have been the obvious answer here, but for now I wanted to see how much I could squeeze out of my axe with faith buffs instead. So I powered up, ran around in the lava to get into RTSR range, baited out the jump attack, and... Yep. Still not enough. Hold that thought, mate. Excuse me, can I just get past? Uh, um, uh, if I could just squeeze through. I'm uh, just trying to get through, mate. Don't mind me. <sighs> Fuck this place. At least I get to enjoy a fun and well-designed boss at the end of it. Right, Miyazaki? God, yes, yeah, slap me harder, tree mommy. With the bed dead, Polana rewarded me with Fire Tempest, and I rewarded her with a gentle pat on the head. It's worth noting that you can just kill her for this anyway, but I wanted to do her quest because of all the great lore it gives you that I'm not including any of in this video. Nito next, and this is pretty straightforward. You can convert the Occult Club from An Orlando into a Divine One to take out the Skellies for good, and then just dodge and cast. There's not a huge amount of danger, since Nito's recoveries are so slow. Now that I had Fire Tempest, I could take on the big boys, since this is, on paper, the most powerful pyromancy. And who better to try it on than Calamite? I have no hope, I can't even beat a staircase. Well, as it so happens, a staircase might have better hitboxes than Calamite. And it also probably wouldn't get one shot by a full cast of Fire Tempest. So, there's that. Now, you can enjoy a highlights reel of a bunch of stuff that wasn't important enough to make it into the script. Ha! Losers! Hey there fellas, I'm back, and this time I brought hot sauce. Good to see you're still a massive prick. 
Farming 30 scales to give to the big lad in Ash Lake might well leave you mentally scarred for life, but it also grants you the Dragon Torso Stone. And using the raw from this gives you a 5 second buff to your melee attacks, which meant I could finally take on Centipede Demon. Here's how it goes. That was honestly one of the most satisfying kills of the entire run. Which is more than can be said for Gwendolyn Stefani here, one of the original prototypes for everyone's favourite kind of boss design. The one that spams spells and runs away. 10 out of 10 gameplay, this shit is bananas. Fortunately, his hitbox remains in place even after he's disappeared to the next county which helps if you're trying to turn his solid snakes into liquid snakes. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh God, I just had the worst dream. I was snatched up by a shadowy limb and then turned into pancakes for the next 19 hours. At least it was just a dream. Just a dream. Look on the bright side of life I hate you, you big I'm scary prick Always look on the light side of life My god, just let me cast my shit You stupid hairy mutt, hope you get a paper cut And stub your toe somewhere in the abyss So... Yeah. Let's talk about Fire Tempest. Casting it causes three separate pillars of flame to rise out of the ground consecutively in different places. In order to maximise the damage, you need to get a full cast off, and you need all three pillars to connect. While this might sound straightforward, it really isn't. For a start, if you want to cast any of the Firestorm Pyromancies, you need to submit a handwritten request by Carrier Pigeon to Miyazaki himself, who will reply within 3-5 to five business days to let you know that the animation is finished and you can actually cast. And the thing about Manus is, he doesn't like waiting for you to do that. Not at all. And if he does, chances are he'll just hop away or somehow manage to just walk through the fire pillars without even getting singed, which means this is not a matter of skill, but a matter of RNG. However, with enough persistence, you can finally get all three pillars to connect, and when you do, something wonderful happens. Yep. So, here's the thing. With every available buff active, each flame pillar does 2011 damage making a total of 6,033 damage. Manus has 6,665 HP. I'm sure you can see the issue here, but luckily there is a saving grace. Instability damage. See, if an enemy is in a position that's considered unstable, for example, if they're in mid-air, they take extra damage. In order to get a true one-shot on Manus, not only do you need to get all three pillars to connect, but he also needs to be jumping for at least one of the hits. And if you thought the RNG just to get all three pillars to hit was bad enough, trust me, it's nothing compared to this. I tried going in front, to his left, to his right, locking on, unlocking, facing him, facing away, using Chaos Storm instead, and praying to the devil in the pale blue moonlight. The results were mostly the same. 
After a while, I tried so many different positions with Manus that this video was in danger of turning into a sex tape, and I was very close to just giving up. When this happened. Hey, look, a win is a win. Quite honestly, getting the Manus one-shot was enough of a victory for me. And although there was another, even harder boss to come, 19 hours of furry hand relief had beaten any enthusiasm out of me, and I just wanted to get the rum finished. I splattered the drake all over the parish bridge, thumbed the painted world for enough souls to hit 32 int so I could use the tin crystallization catalyst, blasted the Ash Lake Hydra into next week, and did the rounds of Laudron to say goodbye to all of my friends in the only way my caveman brain knows how. And then, it was time for the approximately four kings. Now, these guys have a total HP pool of... Yeah, it's a lot anyway. Which puts Manus to shame, and at the time of us all doing this challenge, there was no record anywhere of anyone ever managing to one-shot them without resorting to the use of glitches. Fire Tempest just behaves strangely in the abyss, and although I had a half-baked idea about grouping all four kings together and then hitting them with the AoE of a Sunlight Blade buffed Great Axe, which would hypothetically be mathematically possible, the reality is that even getting a shot off on a single king with this setup is tricky enough. So, doing it to a group of them without fucking dying wasn't gonna happen. So, I settled for a three shot with Dark Bead, one cast per king, because I really wasn't gonna waste any more time on this. Challenge failed successfully. So, did any of the other runners actually manage to get a true four kings one shot? Despite my Four Kings failure, I still intended to finish the run, and there's only one way to do that. Yep, kill the final boss, because that's how the game works. Dark Bead is for chumps. The only true Chad way to finish off this pathetic husk of a god who is Gwyn is to parry and repost him so hard he wets himself. And it's only fair to do so with the weapon I began the run with. Power up, enter the fog, dragon roar, parry his rickety old ass, switch to two-handing, and repost. <clears throat> Again. Look, what I really meant was, power up, apply crystal magic weapon, enter the fog, dragon roar, parry his rickety old ass, switch to two-handing, and repost. Much better. With Gwyn dealt with, I set myself on fire in a subtle reference to how I was feeling after putting myself through all of this. Thanks, Lemon. The cutscene played, and I had almost one-shot my way through Dark Souls. Screw this game. From now on, I am a cosy Minecraft Let's Play channel. Hey guys, Baron here, and today I'll be showing you how to build a state-of-the-art new base. Yay!